Who we work with is equally as important as the work we do. A healthy environment, peers that help you grow, and an uplifting support network all help us wake up excited and ready to excel at the tasks we set out to do on a daily basis. Welcome to Powering Journeys. I'm your host, Tara Overholt. Today, I'm chatting with Brandon Wood about how Parkland works to foster a great company culture for all its employees. Brandon, so great to have you here on the podcast today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Maybe you can just tell us a little bit about what you do here at Parkland and a little bit about yourself. I have been with Parkland for about seven and a half years now. Joined the company back in 2015 in sort of the recruitment realm of things, um, but have had quite an interesting career journey uh, since I joined. So I uh, was originally in recruitment and then gradually kind of transitioned into uh, a talent management L&D blended role um, and dabbled in talent management and uh, L&D up until October of last year uh, and transitioned completely into my current role, which is government relations and external relations uh, with with the organization. What do you like to do outside of Parkland? I know you're a busy guy. I do like to keep myself busy. Um, yeah, so I assume you're referring to my, my kind of second career Mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, singing and dancing. So uh, I am a professional singer and dancer. I, I've worked kind of internationally um, doing that. I've worked on cruise lines. I've, I've lived in multiple different cities. Um, I would say uh, from a vocal perspective, I, I've been classically trained. I, I work in sort of the musical theater realm, um, but also gig out a lot and do random stuff. And most recently, which you're probably aware of, was in the, uh, the grandstand show of the Calgary Stampede and, and got to do that for 10 nights in front of 20,000 people. Wow, that's yeah. so much fun. Yeah, it was great. It was a, it was a blast. The The cast was amazing. Um, the the content that I got to sing was was great. So it was a, a great experience. And I was doing that sort of as a moonlighting experience. So I would work during the day here uh, and then head out to the grounds and, and perform at night. But that's pretty cool that you're able to balance it and that people here at Parkland are like, you know what, we know you're going to be in the show, um, but also, you know, are able to balance the both. Yeah, I would say that that's not overly common. Um, it's, a, it's a tough balance and, and it does require the support of, of the organization that you work for. So I consider myself truly blessed to be with a company that... Um, not only supports it, but all, also celebrates it. Uh, they they made it very very easy for me to kind of pop in and out when when it was necessary for random rehearsals. And um, I of course uh, got the opportunity to perform and had uh, colleagues come see the show and were very supportive of that and sent lots of lovely messages after. So um, it was it was a great great experience. I think that speaks a little bit just about community and kind of what Parkland is about. Do you feel that? I do. Yeah. I think, you know, as an organization, if you only focus on the day to day and the work and the tasks, you miss out on, on a ton of stuff. And so I would say Parkland, um, again, really does celebrate and encourage people to have interests outside of work. They, they encourage you to, to, um, spend time doing things that are outside of your realm of your day to day. And I think that just, you know, happy people who are exploring their interests and the things they like to do are happy workers and happy coworkers as well. Yeah, I think if I had to turn down opportunities because I was at work um, or or that I didn't have the capacity to, to have the flexibility to do things while at work, I think there'd be a little bit of an inner bitterness um, towards my role or towards the company. And uh, I, I will say honestly that I, I've not ever had that, that feeling here. So Brandon, maybe you can tell me what you like about working at Parkland. I would say there's a couple things. Uh, the first would be the pace and the type of work that I get to do. Um, we are a very dynamic quickly moving company, which I admittedly is not for everyone. But for me, I, I love the fact that there's never a dull moment. I come in, um, my day is jam packed. Uh, I get to work on things that I probably normally wouldn't get to work on based on my background or experience. I'm not put into kind of this, this hole or this, this kind of realm of you only focus on this. This is your swim lane. You stay in that swim lane. Um, so I've, 
I've really had the opportunity to kind of develop and grow through experience here, which is is fantastic for me. Um, and I would say the other piece is the people. And I know that you know, a lot of people will say that it's, it's sort of that cheesy comment, you know, I'm drawn, drawn to the people, but, uh, beyond it sounding like lip service, it, it really is genuinely one of the, the main reasons why I love working here. The people are down to earth, they're authentic, um, they're approachable, they're fun. I'm just going to say a lot of words right now that are spinning through my head. Uh, they are, super smart and they're capable. Uh, you know, I, I think about the people here at Parkland and, um, I actually consider a lot of them to be very, very close friends. So while many people will go through their day and, and try to escape their colleagues at the end of the day, I actually seek out opportunities to hang out with my colleagues. I like to think that when I first started working here and the people was a big one, that it was all the people that if this was a high school group project, these are the people that I would want in my project, in my in my group, because everybody is a hard worker, super kind, super thoughtful, and really wants to like lift everybody up. And that's the thing I noticed about everyone working yeah. here. With the people at Parkland, you'd get a you get a good mark on that project for sure. <laughs> that's yeah. exactly it. And I think it probably comes down to maybe the core values that people have at Parkland and they seek out when they're when they're being recruited or when they're hired. Can you talk a little bit about the core values of Parkland? I'm gonna I'm gonna take it one step further beyond just the core values, because I think you know, at Parkland, we we do have our, our set of core values, which are, of course, safety, integrity, community, respect. They're words that sound very common to other company values. Um, but for us, you know, safety is is our primary priority. It, it's we're a publicly traded company. We deal with hazardous materials. It's very important that we're safe, but it goes beyond that. Um, I, I think of one example specifically uh, with regards to safety that really truly demonstrated our safety culture. Uh, I was walking down a set of stairs one day and I was checking my emails as most people do, um, but I didn't have three points of contact. I, I was distracted by my phone and somebody actually stopped me and said, hey, you, you should probably get off your phone and, and, you know, three points of contact and make sure you're focusing while you're walking down the stairs. And my first reaction was not a good one. Admittedly, it was, how dare you <laughs> for, for calling me out? I, I was, it was uncomfortable. Um, but then I thought a little bit more about it and I, I realized that that truly was a moment that demonstrated what our safety culture was. Um, that person, stepped out of their comfort zone. I'm sure it wasn't easy for them to call out a colleague um, and and took a moment to acknowledge what the risk was with me, try to help me see that and then to kind of guide me to, to improving my behavior. Um, and so I would say that was a was kind of a, a turning point for me in terms of realizing sort of the the safety value that we have here at Parkland. And that value is 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 obviously a primary priority for Parkland, and it is something that kind of expe- extends to to all of our regions and jurisdictions. Um, integrity, you know, integrity is uh, something that I would hope a publicly traded company would have in their their set of of, of core values. Um, but for us, it's it goes beyond just you know moral and ethical conviction. It goes to, or it speaks to doing the right thing when people are watching, of course, but then also when people aren't watching. Um, we do have, because we work so quickly here at Parkland, we all have a lot of autonomy. And uh, I would say the the component of integrity um, is is big for us because a lot of us are, are forced to make the right choices uh, when there's no one around to see and, and, you know, it's doing that right thing when, when somebody isn't watching, um, community, of course, community is big. You know, we, we operate in 25 countries. We are, um, we live in the areas that we operate in. And, and so it's big for us to, to give back, to, um, connect with the communities that we operate in. And we do this in a number of different ways. It doesn't always have to be dollars and cents, although that is one component. We have uh, some amazing charitable giving programs. Parkland Pledge is one of them here. Um, But we also encourage our folks to give back to their communities in whichever way makes sense for them. And that all just seems to be the people who are attracted to this kind of a company because they live in their values. And it's also a campaign, I think the bold program and the and the bold. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I know that you were one of the brains, one of the many behind the bold campaign. We asked 
a, a number of different people from a number of different jurisdictions and a number of different roles, you know, what does the ideal Parkland employee look like? What are those those kind of star employees? What what behaviors do they have? And you know, it was interesting. Uh, there were very very strong similarities in all of the answers that we got, and they were those behaviors that I I, I spoke about. So the the humility and the inclusivity and bravery and curiosity and um, all of those behaviors that kind of fit within that that bold um, behavior base. Uh, and so we ended up embedding them into our, our, our bold work. Uh, and so it was quite um, an impactful moment for our organization because it was um, talking about what the behaviors were that we were looking for in employees, but it was from the employee perspective, right? And hearing hearing the responses um, wa- was quite um, enlightening. Uh, we, we had launched Bold kind of passively in 2015, and it had gotten a little bit of roots. It had gotten a little bit of steam and momentum behind it, but it really didn't start taking off until we really got it from the people. From, from the employees. How do you take a program like that that might work really well at headquarters? But this is a company that spans 25 countries in so many different industries, really, and is a company that, as you've said, has grown a lot in the last couple of years. So many acquisitions where you're picking up companies that already have their own culture, that already have their own, you know, concept of bold. How do you sell that across so many different jurisdictions and companies? It's... A good question, and it's something that um, we, I think, maybe had some challenges or struggled with in the early stages, but I think, you know, having it come from the employees was one big piece of that. Having simplistic behaviors to to kind of anchor to really did genuinely help. So talking about humility, for example, you know, we, we all considered each other to be, you know, humble and down to earth and authentic, but to actually say, you know, humility for us really is being low ego, but still high performing, you know, recognizing that you, you offer a lot of value, um, and that you are, you are high achieving, um, but you just don't need more attention put on you kind of thing. There's a particular quote, um, from C.S. Lewis that I think perfectly captures, you know, humility, um, and, and really humility at Parkland, which is, um, it's not that you think less of yourself. It's just that you think of yourself less. Um, and so it's, it's using the words of our employees. It's using the the behavior sets that have been defined by our employees, uh, which I think really helped us kind of permeate those bold behaviors across our jurisdictions and across the different, um, kind of operational divisions that we have within within the organization. You don't even realize that you're right, doing it, right. right? That's pretty neat. You talked about being nimble and resilient. Yeah. And that is something that everyone has had to do in the last couple of years yes. due to the pandemic. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about how the culture was affected by the pandemic? Because I mean, we all were individually, our families, but our workplaces were because suddenly everything was just kind of thrown up against the wall and let's see how we do it. What happened? When the pandemic hit, I was in people and culture. um, And I remember sort of the day that things kind of really very, very quickly started to shut down. Uh, And we, we pivoted, we made people priority. So we made sure that our people uh, were taken care of. We made sure that they uh, were physically and mentally safe. Um, And, and everyone contributed in a different way. And this was actually a, a really unique opportunity for people to, to, um, support one another using talents that maybe they would typically not use, um, or skills that they would maybe not use. So one of the things that, um, I ended up doing, uh, off the side of my desk, which was super fun for me and, and hopefully had, had good impact were these very cheap, low budget, cheesy videos. Um, and it was a, an opportunity for me to, to shoot messaging from an iPhone in, in my, my home. Um, and I packaged them and they were distributed to the organization through a couple different mediums, but really it was an opportunity for me to either share uh, messaging from leadership. If there was key information that needed to be, uh, distributed, uh, in a unique way that maybe we weren't 
used to at that point in time. Sometimes it was just to lighten the mood, right? To, to help people kind of see, see some, some joy to see, to have a little bit of laughter in the middle of their day. Any when, singing? Uh, there was no singing. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe next time I'll oh. do some videos with singing, but, uh, there was some weird gymnastics tricks in some of them. Uh, I did some, uh, uh, character work in oh, some of them. Yeah. That. Yeah. It was, uh, range. it was really, yeah, range, <laughs> right. It was, it was really fun for me to do. Um, but, I, I think the point with all of that is that um, everyone, not just me, not just PNC, pivoted. Everyone uh, shifted gears. Uh, again, we we made sure that the lights were were on still and that operations continued. And a lot of people, a lot of sweat to to make sure that that happened with the additional complications of operating through the pandemic. Um, but uh, we we flexed a muscle that we were actually quite good at flexing already, which was being agile, being nimble, being resilient. There's a lot of hiring that happened at Parkland during the pandemic, which is a really odd thing to happen when you're joining a new company and you're doing it yeah, via tell Teams. Me about that. <laughs> tell me about that, Tara. I was lucky I was at the end, <laughs> but it is tough. And it's not even just that, like not just being hired during the pandemic, but also then suddenly coming back into the workplace and meeting these people in real life suddenly. And can you tell me a little bit about just the the transition even of hiring people during the pandemic and then bringing people back into the workplace? Because it's not fully back, right? Everyone's kind of still in that, you know, half in, half out. We, we spent uh, a lot of time and energy kind of rethinking what onboarding was and rethinking what, what sort of that um, process looked like for our employees. Uh, we, we, definitely tried to create more opportunities. Now, granted, they were virtual, but more opportunities to kind of connect with cameras on, making sure that you're seeing people connecting faces with names. Yeah. And you meet different people and you feel like you're a little bit more connected, not just signing into the one or two meetings you need to be in and just working from home. Yeah. I was actually very eager to get back into the office. Um, a, because I've been here for so long and I, I, I knew people and, and, people. and I vacationed with these people and I, I, I wanted to spend time with these people. So, um, you know, it was, it was important for me to, to connect on a human level just because I was isolated and, you know, my, my dog can only give me so much company, <laughs> right? So, um, it was great to be able to connect on a, on an intellectual level and, and, uh, you know, turn to somebody and ask them a question and get a response in two seconds versus having to schedule a Teams call. Um, so there were those benefits. But then there was also the the element of my team specifically. So in my my current role from when I started to now, it's it's grown exponentially as well. And so there are tons of new people joining this organization that um, I, as an existing employee, also wanted to meet. And I didn't want them to show up to the office not having anyone there and that be their experience. So And people want to return to. And that they want to return to. Well, now that you've talked about how much you like working here, I'm sure there's people listening who want to know how they can join the Parkland team. So where can they find out about the job opportunities that are out there? One of the best ways is to check out our website. So uh, parkland.ca, there's uh, our, our careers postings. Um, we post every job uh, that's available um, and it's by region. So you can you can kind of filter and, and search based on where you're looking. Um, I would say that's one way. Job boards, of course, is another way. Um, one really great way is to to have a chat with somebody that works here. So if you know somebody or if you know somebody that knows somebody that works here, um, sit down, go for a coffee, chat about what their experience is, chat about, you know, the organization, what, what we're working on at that moment, um, the teams and, and how they're growing and, and learn a little bit more about the organization, um, and see if there might be a, a spot, uh, available. Sometimes if somebody approaches us and, and, um, there's maybe not an opportunity at this exact moment, we always make note of it. Right. And, um, I, I know when I was in, in the recruitment realm, when I first started, uh, there were often times where, um, maybe the timing wasn't in that exact moment, but three months down the road or six months down the road, I would recall, Oh, I talked to somebody that was, perfect fit for that. And our team now is ready for that particular role or that particular function. Um, so, so start developing relationships, I would say, uh, with, with people that work here. Um, we don't 
we don't bite. <laughs> Chat with us. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're we're more than happy to to grab coffees and you know people people love talking about about the great stuff that they're they're working on. Well, and there's always something to talk about because of so much growth, Correct. and that's also you know keep checking because right. things continue to change right. here. So you never know when something might might suit you. I just want to ask you lastly, just uh, what have been maybe some highlights about working at Parkland? The first thing that I think of is just the sheer journey that I've been on in my own personal career. Um, I, I don't think I would have had the opportunity to have the diversity of, of opportunity um, at another organization as I've had here at Parkland. I mean, in what reality do people transition from like recruitment to talent acquisition to L&D to government relations and external relations like to now being on this podcast to now being on this podcast opportunities right um so i would say the career journey is is a, a huge one um of course uh, the people i i can't you know stress that enough the people here are genuinely incredible um i would also say what we are doing as an organization, you know, we are innovating. We're not the typical downstream oil and gas company. You know, we are innovating. We're, we're creating, um, products and, and solutions. And we are, um, doing things, uh, in multiple different spaces that, I personally think, um, are, are super cool. You know, it, it's incredible to work for a company that doesn't just kind of stay still. Um, it's incredible to work for a company that is, is constantly, uh, looking to evolve, constantly looking to, to provide our customers with, with the, the products and services that they need um, and to get them where they want to go. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of your insight to Parkland and your experiences. You've really painted a really great picture about what Parkland is for its employees. Thanks so much, Brandon. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. I'm Tara Overholt, your host for Powering Journeys. And if you want to learn more about Parkland, just head to the website parkland.ca or check them out on social media. Music.